Hey, Anna, give me $500 right away. I'm having a gathering with my friends tonight, so I need an amount of money. It would be really, really humiliating if I don't bring along with me any money. So hurry, give me the money. What? $500? Have you gone mad? How could I have this huge amount of money right away? How ridiculous! Anyway, it's just a small gathering. Why do you have to ask for such a fortune? Are you lying to me? Just tell me the truth. What do you need money for? What? You don't believe your own husband? That's absurd! Actually, I tell you what, you don't have the right to speak against my words. You're my wife. Your responsibility is to listen and obey all of my orders. Oh, come on, Jim. You can't be serious. Just because we're married doesn't mean you can demand things like this. We're partners, and it's important to discuss and make decisions together. Besides, $500 is a lot of money, and I can't just magically produce it out of thin air. Partners? Ha! That's a laugh. You should know your place, Anna. I'm the one who makes the money around here, and you're just supposed to support me. If I say I need $500, you should jump right to it and hand it over. It's not that hard. Jim, I work too, and we both contribute to our household finances. This gathering of yours isn't some emergency or necessity. It's just a social event. If you want to go, that's fine, but let's be reasonable about the expenses. We can discuss a budget and find a solution together. Oh, how cute, Anna. You think you have a say in this? But let me remind you who wears the pants in this relationship. I make the decisions and you follow them. It's as simple as that. Again with your constant complaining and whining. Don't you think it's a bit unfair to me? I have tons of things and stuff that need to be covered for this house. Electricity bills, groceries, and thousands of other things that are constantly being thrown in my face. And with your little amount of money, it will never be enough. You and your mother rely on my money for everything. But you just don't know how to behave, do you? What? Behave? How dare you say all these words to me? You have to feel lucky that we let you live here. You're just a good-for-nothing moron. I don't even understand the reason why I married you. If I had known you would never stop with your useless nagging, I would never have tied the knot with you. Oh my god, you're being so unreasonable. I can't believe you could say these things to me. I can't even recognize you anymore. Oh, poor Anna. Always playing the victim. Can't handle a little truth, can you? You're the one who's unreasonable. Constantly pestering me about money and responsibilities. Wasting money? Are you kidding me? I manage the household finances and I know exactly where every penny goes. Unlike you, I prioritize our needs over frivolous wants. I knew all your lies, so don't you dare do that to me. It's no use. What do you even mean? I don't understand anything. Don't pretend to be that naive. You're borrowing money to do with your gambling habit, aren't you? I knew you all along. I overheard all the things you said on the phone with your friends. I've tried my best to pull you out of it. But why do you never listen to me, even just a little bit? What? How could you? Ah, anyway, I don't care if you know about it or not. My mom also knows about it, but she doesn't say anything. You know, it's nothing but a game. Who owns will have to have money? Lots of money. Remember that time when I won and I brought home tons of money? It was a total of $1,000. Yes, and actually, you spent almost all of it buying you an expensive watch. You gave me only $100. What? $100 is quite an amount of money though. How could you be that greedy? You don't have any need for shopping anyway. Why do you need so much money? I was the man in this house, and I earned it first. So of course I had full right to spend it on anything I wanted. That's why I don't want to give you any money. You're so selfish. You know nobody but yourself. And now when your hobby can't give you any money, 
you decide to leech off me? I just can't count how many times you've lost money and then ordered me to bail you out. Then what? It's your job, isn't it? You have to support your husband whenever I'm in need. That's what a wife is supposed to do. Provide for her husband without question. You heartless husband. You're always driving me crazy with your entitlement. But it seems like your debt is increasing day by day, right? If you don't stop this useless hobby of yours, then the consequences will be severe. We can't keep living like this, constantly digging ourselves into a financial hole because of your reckless behavior. Oh no, the consequences. Like I care. I'm not your baby. Stop trying to lecture me and teach me how to live my life. I'm perfectly capable of making my own decisions and dealing with the aftermath. You always have to make everything about yourself and play the martyr, don't you? This is not about playing the martyr. It's about being responsible adults and making smart choices for our future. Your selfishness and lack of consideration for our financial well-being are causing us unnecessary stress and strain. I can't keep bailing you out every time you make a poor financial decision. Poor financial decision? Who are you to judge? I know what I'm doing. I have my own dreams and passions. And if you can't support me in pursuing them, then maybe we need to reevaluate our marriage. I thought a spouse was supposed to be supportive and understanding, but clearly, I was mistaken. Supporting your dreams and passions doesn't mean enabling reckless behavior and ignoring the consequences. We can find a balance, Jim. You can pursue your hobbies and interests, but we also need to be realistic about our financial situation. It's about compromise and working together as a team, not just expecting me to foot the bill every time. Whatever. You're just overreacting as usual. Anyway, cut it out. And give me $500. My friends are waiting out there. Hey, Anna. You lazy daughter-in-law. What are you doing right now? Rush to the kitchen right now and see what's happening here. It's 8 p.m. and there is nothing on the table. I need an explanation for this. Oh, sorry, Mom, but I can explain this. I'm waiting for Jim to come home. It seems like he's out there gambling with his friends again. I knew him. He admitted that to me. So what? He told me that too. But why is that so serious? He's actually bringing money back to us. There's nothing you have to complain about. Nothing? Are you serious? He's not bringing anything home. All the money you receive is from me. All of it. He's leeching off of me as well. The truth is, our dear son, he's nothing but a freeloader. I've tried to convince him lots of times, but he just never listens. Come on, Anna. Why do you have to be so aggressive? It's not that big of a deal, really. It's just a game. Of course, we can't always win. But whenever he wins, he always brings home a whole lot of money. Much more than your pathetic job. Oh, you think so? But actually, he's getting money from me every day. I give him an allowance, and I cover his expenses. And don't you know that there are always gangsters out there who force him to pay his debts? It's a constant struggle to keep him out of trouble. Wow, Anna. Now you're playing the victim card? You think that with your stupid touching stories, then you can manipulate me. Ha ha ha, not anymore. Well, I tell you this, you'll never compare with my son, even though he's gambling. So what? He's still bringing money home. Some time. Oh my god, how much money did he give you? So that you could stand by him no matter how ridiculous he seems? What? How could you say that about your mother-in-law? It's very rude, don't you know? At least, I'm still your mother-in-law. So you'd better learn how to behave properly in front of me. We've been so easy on you these days. Is that the reason why you're being so stubborn and naughty like this? Ugh, it's such a nuisance talking to you. 
It seems like you never want to listen to any of my words. If you still continue to spoil him like this, soon you'll have to pay the price. Price? <laughs> You're becoming too sensitive. Well, I will make sure that nothing bad will happen to this family. It's you who is making things so complicated. And that thing drives me mad. If only you could get lost right now. Your presence here is making us furious every time. Wait, what? Oh my god, what are you talking about? Why do you have to be so heartless to your own daughter-in-law like that? We're supposed to be family, Beverly. Why can't I? Then why don't you take a good look at yourself? What could you actually do to support this house? Nothing. Except for those trivial things that I don't even want to mention. Even Jim thinks the same. He sees no value in you. Well, it's the truth. No one in this family wants you. You're nothing but a useless dumb head. How can you say such hurtful things? I do plenty to support this family. I take care of the household chores, I cook, I clean, and I make sure everything is taken care of. Just because my contributions might not be as flashy as yours doesn't mean they're worthless. I'm here for my family, and that should count for something. Please, Anna, spare me the sub-story. Your domestic duties are nothing special. Anyone could do them. You're replaceable. And as for Jim, well, he's starting to see the truth. You're holding him back with your incompetence. He deserves better. Someone who can actually contribute something meaningful to his life. That's where you're wrong. You underestimate the value of emotional support and the stability I bring to our home. I may not have a high-powered career or a bank account overflowing with money, but I have qualities that are important for a healthy family dynamic. And if Jim can't see that, then maybe he needs a reality check too. Oh, Anna, always trying to justify your inadequacies. The truth hurts, doesn't it? You're just a burden, a weight dragging this family down. Your presence annoys us all. Maybe it's time for you to face the facts and accept that you're not wanted here. We'd be better off without you. I won't let your toxic words break me down, Beverly. I know my worth, and I know the love and care I bring to this family. I won't be pushed away or belittled by someone like you. You may think I'm a dumbhead, but I won't let your negativity define me. And mark my words, you'll have to regret it soon. Oh, Anna... You're really amusing. Keep living in your little fantasy world, but mark my words. Your presence here will only bring more misery and frustration. The sooner you realize that, the better it will be for everyone involved. Beverly, where are you all? I just woke up and saw a group of horrible gangsters all around the house. But when I look around, all of you have gone. I don't understand anything. Answer my phone. Now. You owe me an explanation. Beverly! Oh, calm down, my sweetie. Nothing to worry about. They're just the people that come to get the money that Jim owed. Wait, what? Could you repeat that? Are they Jim's debtors? Yeah, I suppose. Oh no! That's impossible! I can't believe it! Where are you right now? Why don't you go downstairs? The gangsters said that they are looking for Jim. Well, we're not at home right now. Oh my god! I can't find you anywhere! And where is all of your stuff? Did you move out? Yes, we did. The debtors said that if Jim didn't pay the money on time, they would take our home and all of our property, so we had to make our escape. But don't even expect me to give you the address, because I won't. Why didn't you tell me a word about it? Am I not a member of this house? Where can I live just now? Don't you think it's a bit unfair to me? I don't see anything wrong in doing this. You're not part of this family, so it's clear you don't have the right to hear this. It's easy. Why don't you understand? No, I don't understand anything at all. 
I don't deserve to be treated like this. I've been here, supporting and caring for all of you, and this is how you repay me? By leaving me in the dark and leaving me with nowhere to go? Oh, poor little Anna. Feeling sorry for herself. You act like you're such a martyr. But the truth is, you're just an outsider trying to cling to a family that doesn't want you. You're nothing but a burden, and it's about time you realize that. I may not be blood related to this family, but I've given my heart and soul to make this house a home. I've loved Jim and supported all of you through thick and thin. And now, when you're facing troubles, you choose to abandon me? It's not fair, and it's not right. Oh, Anna, always playing the victim. You think you're so important, but you're disposable. You're replaceable. We don't need you or your so-called love. We're better off without you. What the hell are you talking about just now? You're better off without me? That's ridiculous of you. Just remember all of the money you got. Your electricity bills, your clothes, your food. Jim did contribute some of them, but only when he won. When he lost the games, all he did was come home and urge me for more money. And the money he lost was always higher than the money he earned. After all, who paid for that? Me. Oh, yeah. Just continue with your complaining. You always have something to whine about, don't you? But let's not forget that you still have time to pack your things, right? Oh, I forgot. The gangster said to me that they would wipe out the whole house. So, maybe you should focus on completing your responsibility as a nice and obedient wife. You know, helping us pay off the debt. <laughs> you think it's funny? You think it's a joke? This is my life we're talking about. I've worked hard to support this family, to provide for all of us. And now, when things get tough, you want to wipe your hands clean and leave me to deal with the consequences? That's not fair. Life's not fair, Anna. You should know that by now. You've always been the one to complain and play the victim. But guess what? No one owes you anything. You're not entitled to a perfect life. Maybe it's time you learned that. Oh, and one more thing. I forgot to tell you. Jim had already written a divorce petition. He left it on your table. Your only job is to sign it. We've had enough of you and your stubborn attitude. What? How cruel of you to do that to me. I never asked for a perfect life, Beverly. All I asked for was love, respect, and support. But instead, I've been treated like an ATM, drained of my hard-earned money to cover Jim's losses. I've sacrificed so much for this family, and now you want to discard me like I'm worthless. Well, guess what? I won't stand for it anymore. Well, you're always the martyr. You act like you've made all these sacrifices, but no one forced you to do anything. You chose to stay. You chose to support Jim. And now you're acting like it's everyone else's fault. Take some responsibility for your own choices. I may be leaving, but I won't end up alone and miserable. I'll find a place where I'm appreciated and valued, where my contributions are recognized. I won't let your negativity define me. And when I build a life filled with love and respect, you'll see just how wrong you were to underestimate me. Oh, off to find a fair to landing, are you? Good luck with that. But mark my words, you'll end up alone and miserable. No one wants someone like you around. You're nothing but a nuisance. But first, you'd better find a way to escape first. I'm afraid they didn't have enough money and begun to murder instead. When the time comes, then I don't know what terrible thing will happen to you. <laughs> Ugh, I can't believe you could be this cunning. You abused me and now you left me here dealing with this mess all alone. You'll all pay for this. Anna, hey, it's me. Answer my phone. I have something to tell you right away. Anna! Um, who are you? Why do you know my name? Are you stalking me? I'm gonna hang off right now. No, it's me, your husband, Jim. Please don't hang off. I need your help. What? Husband? I don't have a husband. 
Oh, I remember. You're my ex-husband, right? Oh my god, I can't believe it. Yes, I truly am. Phew, finally, you remember me. We're not husband and wife anymore, but we still love each other just like before. Don't you think so? What? <laughs> Are you dreaming? Love? How dare you say this to me? Even though you were the one who left me and put all the responsibility on my shoulders? You ruined my life. What? I ruined your life? Are you kidding? I loved you so much, so I had to leave you. I just wanted to go far away and earn a lot of money. Then I could come back and provide you with a better life. So why did you leave me with the gangsters all alone? Um, well, I just... You listened to your mother and let me face them all on my own. How could you be so cowardly like that? And selfish also. You have to trust me. I was so worried that they would harm me and my old mother, so I had to tell her to move. What about me? I'm your wife. Didn't I deserve to know about this? Wasn't I a part of this family? Am I that insignificant? I just thought that with your money, you could obviously get over this. Ugh. I don't have any more words to say to you. So just spit it out. What's the reason you contacted me today? Hurry, I don't want to waste more time on your stupid explanation. Well, I heard that you are about to buy a new house. Is that right? Well, yes. So what? So, I'm really happy for you. I'm glad that you're still alive and have a lot of success nowadays. You even have enough money to buy a new house. That's incredible. Just tell me, how could you get rid of those gangsters and have that much money? Well, that's a strange story also. It turned out that the leader of the gangsters was my high school friend. We recognized each other, and he not only didn't charge me for money, he also gave me the money I needed to support my own life. The seemingly scariest person could also be the softest one, don't you think? And about the money, it's all the result of my hard work and effort. I worked hard, so it's normal that I'm totally worth this amount of money. What? The leader's your friend? Wow, that's a miracle. And I always know that you are diligent. You work really hard from day to night. And I appreciate that. And did you tell him to erase the debt for me? I'll be really thankful if you could. Of course not. Well, enough with the praises. What's your purpose for calling me anyway? Um, we're really miserable now. We've run out of money and don't have a place to live right now. What? Really? But why? Well, we did bring along some money to live a brand new life in England. But what a pity, I used them to gamble, again. Wait, what? Ugh, you're getting on my nerves, you know that? You just never change, do you? Even when you're being chased by gangsters, you still continue gambling? I just don't understand you anymore. Yeah, I know it's my fault. I know I did wrong. So what about your mother? You guys support each other really well, don't you? Well, she persuaded me to give up on gambling many times, but I didn't listen. She said that she regretted neglecting your words. She was so ashamed that she couldn't even call you. I lost all of my money now, not one win. And we had to give up all of our stuff to begin again. But without money, we couldn't do anything. We have to become beggars and live on the money of other people. It's humiliating. Well, that consequence is obvious. So please, could you spare us some mercy and give us some money? Or if you like, we can always get back together, just like before. It would be my pleasure to do that. No way! Don't ever speak to me like that because it's not gonna happen. That's absurd! A loser like you want to get back together with me? <sighs> Mark my word, it could only happen when pigs fly. Your life is miserable, but it doesn't matter to me. We're no longer husband and wife. Why do I have to care about you? 
But we used to be. Don't you feel a little bit bad for me? It's so disappointing. Well, Jim, I gotta say, I was so disappointed with you when you got up and left me hanging all by myself five years ago. And you know what? I spilled the beans to those gangsters about you and where you're at. They're gonna send their goons over to England to hunt you down. So you better hide your sorry butts real carefully, because if something bad goes down, don't even think about blaming me. What? Seriously? So you're still gonna leave me high and dry, huh? Come on, Anna. You've got some nerve. How could you treat your ex-husband like this? It's done, man. It's over. I'm not your dumb slave anymore. Don't you dare try to boss me around or give me orders. If you keep threatening me like this, I'll have no choice but to report you to the police. Don't say I didn't warn you. What? No way! Ugh, Anna! You're not getting away with this, mark my words! So, after that, I blocked Beverly and Jim from everything. Once they realized they couldn't reach me anymore, they started changing their numbers and bombarding me with their awful words all the time. But you know what? I was so used to their crappy attitude by then that I just shrugged it off. I decided to ignore them completely and focus on myself. And guess what? The universe finally caught up with those two troublemakers. They ended up finding themselves in the clutches of some gangster and became his slaves. The gangster's leader even told me that Beverly and Jim had to do whatever he said, and they lost all their freedom. Well, serves them right. As for me, now that I've rid myself of those toxic people, I can finally live life for myself. I bought a sweet house with my own hard-earned cash, and let me tell you, it's amazing. I'm also spending more money on self-care, traveling to awesome places, and doing more charity work. I don't even need to mention how fantastic my life is now. <laughs>